with the seventh guide for our new player guide series. And we're into the seventh story car here, uh, which is a 1998 uh, Ribson Starline. So we'll go ahead and get started with the description here. Hi, it's me, Johnny Johnson. Remember, I visited, so visited you soon after you opened up the repair shop. I see the business is good. I hope I can take partial credit for it. It was satis I was very satisfied with how quickly you work, and I thought you could use some advertising. Okay, going back to business. I have a terrible case here for you today. I snapped it up cheap from some kid. He wasn't really aware what he was driving and how much it was worth, but his lack of interest in the car is pretty obvious. Please take care of the bodywork and the interior. The car definitely needs it. While you're at it, check the clutch and the suspension elements. I have doubts about them. Do what you have to do, but uh, don't go overboard. It's supposed to work and look acceptable, but I don't want you to go. But I don't want to go broke. I still want to make some money from it. I hope we're clear on that. See you. Uh, repair or replace body parts. Change the oil. Seems like all of our story cars need some oil, so we'll, we'll fix on that. Uh, and then some other tasks. And also, happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we're in a new year. 2023. Hopefully a little better than 22, right? Car status. We'll go straight in here. Okay, we have a fair... Uh, two pages of undiscovered parts that we got to work on. Body panels, we could just do that first. So front bumper, left door. There's our left door. Let's take that off. And go back to the repair. Left door, left... Front left door window, we already took that off. Front left fender, there is no front left fender. So, we've got that covered. Uh, front license plate, there was no bumper there anyway. Um, front right door, no bumper. Front right door. Okay. Front right fender. Uh, the hood, there is no hood. Uh, left body window A. So left body window A, it's right there. I like taking off the body panel parts that uh, a customer once replaced. Left headlight, there is no left headlight. Betting they're gonna want a right headlight. Uh, left side mirror, we already have that off because we took off the door. Left tail light. There is no left tail light. Rear bumper and rear window. Rear bumper, rear window. Uh, right body window A. And then there was a right headlight which there is none on the car, so we don't have to take it off. Right headlight, right side mirror we already took off. Uh, right tail light, there was none. Trunk and the windshield. So basically, oh, there's a right tail light, there's one. And the windshield. Okay, so we have the body panels off that we need to address. Now, since we have it, Let's go ahead and move this car over to our car wash. It doesn't cost us anything to wash the car, and just looking at this is just driving me insane. So I'm just going to knock the dust off of this for the customer. And hey, we're a nice mechanic. Why not? And we can detail her up for free too, right? This makes it easier to look at and work with. All right. So looking at these parts, let's go ahead and add all these parts to our shopping list. Right now, I do not have a repair bench in this guide save yet, so we couldn't take these parts to our repair bench and repair them, but all of these parts actually are in the repairable range, so they could be repaired if we had a repair bench. But we would need to have the garage expansion and the workshop bench, so that was a 10K for the garage expansion, like 1500 for a workbench. We're not quite there yet as far as money goes. That's okay. So we'll go to the bodywork station. Rips and Starline's the first one. We need a front bumper. 
front left door, left door window, left fender, right door, right door window, right fender. We need a hood, body window, left headlight. I'm not even looking at the shopping list here. I'm just remembering what I needed to buy. Tail light, rear bumper, rear window, rear body window, headlight. You notice basically we just needed all the parts. So we just bought the entire body panel for this car. So let's go ahead and go to assemble mode. We'll put on all the parts. Now the one thing I forgot to buy, let's go back to the main page and buy a license plate. And just like I did in the previous, I always end up buying a Wyoming plate just because I like the mountain view. And it's all the way at the bottom, so I just scroll all the way to the bottom, and that's where Wyoming's at. But you pick out a plate that you like, you know. It doesn't have to be what I like. And body A. Okay, the front is done. Let's get this body panel on. Mirror. Window. Ooh, that, that window is bad. Did we not select the right window? Yeah, somehow I ended up putting in the 25 and not the 100. I don't know how I did that. Tail lights. Bumper. And there was a license plate in the back. Did we have to replace that? Yeah, we didn't. So I think, body-wise, we have replaced all the body panels. I thought he had said something in the description here that he wanted the interior addressed. Um, when we had read the story. So let's go to normal mode and go to interior parts um, and interior disassemble. Just take off these panels here, uh, the couch in the back, the two seats and the steering wheel. That's just the interior parts. And then I'm gonna go to normal mode, excuse me, and car status. And let's see if that was part of the undiscovered parts. It wasn't. Other tasks. Okay, we had nothing to do with the interior. That's fine. I thought he had said in the description he wanted the interior addressed, but clearly he doesn't. So let's go back to interior assemble, and we'll just throw back in the same interior parts because it's not on our, our uh, worksheet uh, list to address. Normal mode. Let's move this to our lifter. Okay, we got it in our lifter. And if we go back to our repair order, we have to change the oil. Uh, we have to change brake fluid, change coolant, change the power steering fluid, and refill washer. So let's get our drain tool out here first. Let's drain the brake fluid. Okay, drain the coolant. And drain the power steering fluid. Then we'll right click and go to part unmount. And we'll just unmount the washing fluid cap and just put a little bit more fluid in. He didn't need much. Okay, that's addressed. Radiator looks okay. How does the water pump look? Uh, don't see... Ah, there it is. Water pump looks fine. So we probably won't have to pull the water pump. The only reason I'm checking that is I just don't want to have to pull the water pump and be stuck having to put coolant all over the ground. So I'll still wait on putting the coolant in, coolant in to last, but the brake fluid we can go ahead and put in. And the power steering fluid we'll put in. There is the brake fluid, and we'll put in the power steering fluid. All 
Alright, that's in. And let's do some diagnostics on this car. We'll start with our OBD scanner. This will kind of give us some data about what parts could be wrong or incorrect with this vehicle. All right, so we have two spark plugs, two ignition coils, three spark plugs, three ignition. Oh, actually, all four spark plugs are bad. One, two, three ignition coils, one's okay. Got both spark plugs. So this is a V6, so four of the six are bad. All right. And I'm betting that's on our shopping list. Yep. Okay. Let's go back to our tools and do a compression test. Can't be started, so we can't do a compression test. We check on the electronic multimeter. battery is uh, dead. So let's pull the battery. Now here is one thing that we might go ahead and purchase right here. If we go to our garage expansion, we can get a battery charger for 550 bucks. Now we're going to get one of these anyway. It's a useful tool to have in your shop. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this now. The battery charger sits over here. Now that 1% battery we just pulled off of that uh, old car click on it and just leave that there for a, a bit it actually charges fairly quick um, and that that will uh, uh, charge that battery up even though it was one percent and we won't have to buy this guy a new battery so go back to our engine we just did our electronic multimeter let's check on the tread on these tires And the tires check out good. And check the fuel system, and it won't allow us to test it because we can't start this bad boy up. That's all right. Let's see, is battery done boiling? Looks like it is. Go over here and part mount. A 100% battery. Right back in. Excellent. So let's go to... Um, our examine mode and let's just examine the engine and see if there's other parts that we could pick up that are uh, not working properly well there we go right on top uh, belt tensioner on the front there looks bad fan is bad engine cover looks bad we got some belts that look bad okay we, we've identified some things Check on the fuse box. Check the suspension system. And all I'm doing here is I just click the wheel and just holding down on the wheel and that'll check kind of the driver side suspension system as much as we can. Let's click on the cross member. That'll identify some more parts for us. And again, reason to do this, we're trying to just diagnose the car. So if you were a real mechanic, you're going to pop the hood, you're going to visually inspect the belts, you're going to tug on the belts, look for fraying, um, you're going to pull a dipstick, check on the oil. I mean, there's some things you're going to do with a car uh, without using a diagnostic tool necessarily to try to say, okay, well, what's, what's happening with this vehicle? What are we missing? What's broken? You know? All right, let's just check on the rear of the car. We can get her started up. Battery obviously needed to be addressed, so we can't start it. Oh, okay, we got a drive axle there in the back that looks bad. Let's check on the uh, driver's side rear. Yep, another drive axle on the back there that looks bad. Check on the cross member. 
Okay. Drive shaft looks okay. How's the exhaust system? All right. So we know a lot about this car now, just from running our diagnostic tools and examining uh, the vehicle as much as we could. So we know we need a belt tensioner, coils cover, an engine head cover, a couple of ignition coils, radiator fan, the rear axles, serpentine belt, the spark plugs, a throttle, wheel hub bearing, and there's four parts we have yet to identify. And we know we need to drain the oil too. So the fact that I know we need to drain the oil, let's just go ahead and pop it up in the air. Let's move this over to our Ripson and drain it. And move our drain tool back. Again, I don't know where that oil goes. Apparently we got a, uh, um, like a janitor that comes in after hours and fix that, fixes that for us. I've drained so much oil into that thing and I've never addressed it or dealt with it. But apparently it just gets taken care of. Pull the oil filter. Pretty sure that's going to need to be replaced. Yep. That was one of the four parts that wasn't discovered. All right. So if I go to out here in examine mode, you can see which parts have not been yet identified, which sometimes can be helpful. Is there a part that I just need to pull? These shocks haven't been looked at. The uh, bushings here haven't been looked at. So there's some parts, like if I wanted to just pull apart and say, what's the condition of it? I could go here and say, well, is this shock good, right? I could just pull the shock. Check my inventory. Hey, the shock's 67%. So that shock's fine. And then I could just go to part mount, put the shock back on. And then go, if I went out of there, back into examine mode, you could see the spring there is not... Uh, identified the spring cap wasn't identified go to normal mode just pull the spring cap see if that's okay yeah the spring cap was fine and go to part mount and then you can put the spring cap right back on so that's just another way you can identify parts to say what's the condition of the part if you needed to so let's take the rear wheels off because we know the drive axles are bad Take this drive axle off. That bearing looks bad too. I pulled, I pulled the bearing too. Ah, that's a 5% bearing. Go to our car status. Oh, the wheel hub bearings were already identified, so that's good. So let's add those two things and the oil filter to our shopping list. And go into our car parts. And I hadn't removed these other uh, body panels that I had put on our shopping list from this yet. That's okay. We need two wheel bearings, a rear drive axle. We know we're going to need two of them, and one oil filter. And then I'm just going to hold down clear list, and it clears all that off my shopping list. And part mount, put on the nice 100% bearing, put on the nice 100% drive axle, and put on the good wheel. Pepsi Max to warm you up in the morning, right? <laughs> Let's go to this side. We'll pop off this rear wheel. Let's take off the drive axle on this side. And the wheel bearing. And we'll go to part mount. We already purchased the parts we need. New wheel bearing. And a new drive axle. And then we could slap the wheel back on. All right, and if I go to my inventory, I could sort these by condition, bad to worse. And I'm just going to go ahead and sell all these parts except for my oil filter. So sell everything below 64%. I just got rid of all those body panels that we had just replaced. 
And then the only thing we have in our inventory right now is our 100% oil filter, which I'm just going to go ahead and place on the car. So that that is done. And since I'm not recalling what other parts I need to replace, I'm going to examine mode. I don't remember if there was other suspension or brake issues that we needed to address. Doesn't appear to be, at least in parts that we've examined. Go to normal mode and just kind of lay the eyes on these brakes. That brake looks okay. And the reason I'm doing this now is just I have the car up in the air, so I'm just going to kind of visually inspect the parts that I hadn't identified yet and see if there's any that are just covered in rust, knowing that I'm going to probably have to pull them, inspect them, and possibly replace them, because there's three parts that have yet to been identified in this car. All right, doesn't look like it, at least from my quick view of the front brake system. I guess I can look at the rear brakes. They look okay there. And they look kind of reasonable there. So maybe it's not a brake issue. But I'm going to drop it out of the air, and then we can get in here and start working on the, um, the engine system. We knew the throttle was bad. That goes on the uh, intake. So we're going to go ahead and move the bolts for that. There we go. Those four bolts are off. This intake manifold looks terrible. Was that identified as a bad part? Now, see that? How it's in gray? It was a part that our diagnostic tools couldn't identify. Now, the compression tester, I think, would have picked this up, maybe. Um, but as you look at it, Look at the amount of rust on this piece. It looks bad. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pull the intake. Okay, it's not letting me pull the intake, so there's something else in its way that I have to remove first, which if you go in here close, you can see the fuel rail goes into the intake. So let's take the fuel rail off first. Now can I pull the intake? I can. There's a rusted bolt. Hit it with the WD-40. And the fuel system, again, was one we couldn't run because the car wouldn't start. So if I go to my car status, I was just on the page. Okay, we identified a part. We only have two unidentified parts, and sure enough, it was the intake manifold. So that's, that's a useful tip right there. So we know the throttle's bad, the intake manifold's bad. All right. And there was parts on the front of the engine here that were bad. The belt tensioner and the fan, for example. So trying to work on the engine with the car or the engine in the car, sometimes you have to click on parts and kind of adjust your zoom so that you can get to a good spot. Generally, if I'm working on the front of an engine behind the radiator, I'll kind of get this side view so I can kind of see all those parts. And then make sure you have your setting set to not zoom in on the part by default. Otherwise, every time you click on it, your mechanic keeps moving. Or as right now, I can just uh, click on a part. Now, if I click and tap, it'll move the zoom. If I click and hold, it won't move me, which is useful. All right, belt tensioner is off. Let's take the belt off. Okay, that's off. And we just leveled up. That's nice. Now, this part, this is a power steering pump. Look at the amount of rust on this power steering pump versus the alternator on this side. The alternator has a few pieces of rust. Now, it doesn't always mean the part's bad, but it could be. We couldn't identify this through our diagnostic tools, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it and see if that's one of the two parts that um, I see the power steering pumps at 1%. Let's check our car status. Was that one of the two parts that were not discovered? Surely it was. So power steering pump. So we found another part that's screwed up. Uh, let's see. Let's check our car status. Was there anything in the timing system? Because I want to know if I have to pull the timing cover or not. Coils cover. Engine cover. Um, it won't be many parts to remove the cover, so let's go ahead and just take the timing cover off and look at the timing chain. 
Okay, we have to take off a few other parts here. Probably this pulley. And this is more for the visual inspection since we're already here and we moved a bunch of stuff. There's the water pump. Water pump looks fine. Take off the top cover. All right, those cam gears look okay. The belt looks reasonable. I couldn't tell you 100% that it's not bad, but it doesn't look terrible as far as like the amount of buildup on it. So, all right, let's go ahead and mount our timing covers back on because I don't think we're gonna have to address timing stuff. that pulley back on. That pulley was fine. And the crank shaft pulley was fine. And up on top here, put a part unmount. We know we have to take this cover off. And this one needs to be replaced. It's bad. WD-40 on the rusty bolts. Okay, that cover's off. Now just, again, I'm going to go to examine mode. The reason being, I want to identify the number of the ignition coils that are bad. So it's two, three, and six. And the reason I'm, I'm counting these from the front. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And the reason being, if you replace these and you put the new part on let's say cylinder one that was in yellow, and you put the yellow part that you had taken off and kept on cylinder two, the game will not count that as completed. So two, three, and six. And I just use my piece of paper and pen to write these down as a memory system for myself. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull all the ignition coils real quick. All the ignition coils are off and you can kind of visually look at these spark plugs this one looks white this one's rusted 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 white rusted so it's probably two three four and six as far as piss or spark plugs that are bad but let's just confirm that in examine mode yep so we have a yellow spark plug in one two was red, three was red, four was red. Yep, so that's that's what we need to address. So let's go ahead and pull all the spark plugs. And I'll write down the spark plug numbers here. Two, three, four, six. So ignition coils are a little bit different than the spark plug, that's okay. pop off this cover, which we already had identified as a part that was bad. Ah, look at that camshaft. Camshaft was not identified. Now that would have come up in our compression test that a camshaft was bad. I'm just gonna pop out here to examination mode. I was wondering if I had if I had taken the cover off, could the mechanic then visually look at that camshaft and say it's bad? It doesn't appear that he can. Um, I'm trying to examine it, it won't let me. But just looking at this camshaft, especially with the previous orders that we have done, a camshaft with this much rust on it, that part just looks bad. So let's go ahead and pop over here again. We had taken the um, timing covers off thinking we might need to address some timing or just to look at those timing parts I think we're gonna have to pull the camshaft so we're gonna have to take the timing covers off anyway so that we can get the belt off and get that camshaft off that pulley get the belt now we can actually know what the percentage on, on that belt Sort it by arrival. And the belt was uh, 75%. That's okay. 
Let's take off the cam gear and then pull that camshaft. Oh, we got to get the camshaft bearing caps. Let's get them all here. WD-40 on that one. camshaft. I'm going to check on that. That camshaft's at 3%. And that was the last part that we had to identify. So now we have all the parts removed from the vehicle that we've uh, that know are bad uh, or we've replaced the other parts that were, were bad. So if we pop to our inventory, I'm going to change the sort from condition going up so that all the bad ones are at the bottom and the good ones are at the top. Uh, all the bad parts are at the top and the bad, good parts are at the bottom. Excuse me. Then I'm just going to right click on each of these parts that are in the red. That adds it to my shopping list. Okay. Then we'll go to our store. We need four spark plugs. That's not at this store. Power steering pump. Radiator fan. Ignition coils aren't at the shop. Camshaft is here, though. Intake manifold. Engine head cover. Belt tensioner. Serpentine belt. Coils cover. And a throttle. That's the parts we can buy at the main shop. If we go over to the electronics store, we can purchase our four spark plugs and our three ignition coils. All right, now we can just go back to part mount and we can reassemble the parts that we have uh, removed. Put the caps on. Hope everyone's got a good plan for New Year's. It's Bears game today. Go Bears. Take down them Lions. Keep the Lions out of the playoffs. Although, part of me as a Bears fan would also not be too upset if the Lions beat the Bears today. I know it's sacrilegious to say that. But the reason being, if the uh, Lions win, it also puts them a game up on the Packers. And if I had to pick between the Packers and the Lions... I would take the Lions every day of the week. As a Bears fan, I just cannot stand the Packers. And Aaron Rodgers, that pompous jerk. All right, cam gear. Then we can put on our Serpentine Belt A. I'll get that little pulley on here. Timing cover. And you'll notice I'm not zooming in on the parts. I'm just keeping my mechanic in one spot. Partially because I can see all of the mounting bolts from the position I'm at currently. Power steering pump. Now, I just know where the bolts are on that power steering pump, so I'm not even moving my mechanic over to it because the bolts are over here. Idler roller. Put on this serpentine belt, the new serpentine belt. Get the belt tensioner. Oh, I guess I grabbed the fan first. That's fine. Put on the new fan first. And then let's grab that belt tensioner. Okay. Now if we go to the top here, remember, our spark plugs, two, three, four, and six were bad. So in position one, I'm going to put one of the 73% spark plugs. Still reasonable, still can be used. Same for the ignition coil. Ignition coil was 2, 3, and 6 that were bad. So I'll put one of the 71% ones in position 1. Position 2, I can put one of the new uh, spark plugs and a new ignition coil. Position 3, 
100% spark plug, 100% ignition coil. Position four, 100% spark plug, and then the ignition coil on four is one of the yellow ones. Position five is a yellow plug and a yellow ignition coil. And then position six is 100% and 100%. And if you ever wanted to make sure you did it properly, right after you do that, go to your um, car status, and you should see three ignition coils with nice green check boxes, and one, two, three, four spark plugs with nice green, che green check boxes. So we did it properly. Put on our new coils cover, and attach the proper bolts. All right, and the intake manifold. The bolts for here, I am gonna move my mechanic around so I can see them, and all four of them are right there. Hold down, there's actually one below too, but in this view, I can see them all. Fuel rail, and then the throttle. There's the new throttle, and we'll slap the four bolts on the throttle. Right. And we'll just go to our car status. We have all the parts replaced. We have to put the coolant in, which I did not fill the coolant after I had drained it, just in case I had to pull the water pump or the radiator as we were going through its diagnostics. But now that we're done, and we know we're not doing any more diagnosis, I'll fill the coolant. Coolant is in. And let's put some oil back in. We had drained it and put in the new filter, obviously. And again, once the bottle tips, you're filled. And if you want to just double check, grab your dipstick. And our oil is right in the middle of the hash marks. We're good. And go to car status. First page of the story order is all done. Body panels are done. The oil is done and the coolant drain refill all done. So we're going to get a 20K net payday out of this deal, which is not bad. I mean, we'd started with what, 11,000? It cost us almost 8,000 bucks worth of parts to repair this vehicle, so. All right, so our mechanic is up to level 12. We're at 22,784. We have some new case. Let's go to number three and four for the for the cards. Three, four. So we got money and XP. All right, and that leveled us up to level 13. Collect the items. We have some parts here that we can sell. So let's just sell the parts. All right, and I'm gonna just escape and save, just so I didn't lose that. Go back to our Mechanics, we have eight available skill points to us right now. Uh, this lucky is actually pretty useful. And the reason being, the story orders, you get a case after every story order. So we're doing that through this guide series. But if you pick up a customer's car, let's say one that just says, I just need you to change the oil. Sometimes I've had a few customer orders that are just, please refill my washer fluid. How long does that take you? Like two seconds? And you get like 10 bucks for it? But if you have the skill lucky, you have a 25% chance out of doing that quick order to get a case. And those cases are the best source of scrap in the game. And for me, if you've seen some of that other series I've been doing, I like to use the scrap to take performance parts and take those performance parts from one star to three star, which increases the the performance increase you get out of those performance parts. So it's very useful. Plus you get money, you get barn maps. So my point being here, it cost me six skill points to get lucky. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. In my mind, this tree is the best tree in the game. My opinion. Uh, the speed here, is it helpful? Yep, absolutely. Repair is probably number two. Now, the reason I haven't been putting a lot of points in that, we were obviously leveling up our mechanic. The eagle eye, it's useful. It just cuts the time that you're holding down click 
So, you know, it saves you time. That's fine. The movement speed, this will be the last thing that I end up putting uh, points in. If you want your mechanic to move faster, hold shift as you're walking. He'll run. Again, that's a, it's a small time saver. If you invested in a tablet, you never have to leave the car when you're working on it anyway to go walk to your computer or walk to other parts. So I don't see how that saves you a huge amount of time playing the game. Uh, the, the repair, this is useful. So that'll be the next thing that I'll level up is the repair parts. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that. And we're out of skill points. Now let's go over to our garage expansion. We do have 23K. I think it's going to be go time to let's go ahead and get our garage expansion on. So I'm going to buy it. So we now have an expanded garage. The other things here that I'm going to invest in, the workbench and the body repair station. This will be the next thing that I like to have, the engine uh, tools. So you get the cherry picker to pull the engine out of the car and the engine mount stand. So you can pull an engine and then do the work on the engine on an engine stand. It's just a little easier, you know, especially like as you're doing the timing stuff at the front, the radiator's right there. You're trying to zoom your guy in and out. It's kind of annoying. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna buy, let's buy the workbench. But now we have a workbench. We still have 11K. Let's go ahead and get the body repair station purchased as well. All right, so now we have some extra stuff. The warehouse, that's useful uh, to just store parts out of your inventory, but not a huge deal, really. Salvaging, it's useful, but this is also what going to be the thing you're going to have to invest in before you can start augmenting parts. So that's going to be useful. The test path is actually pretty cool. That's also where you're going to get your wheel alignment. I think there's actually a story car coming up where we have to align a car. So we're going to need to get this at some point, but that's another 10K purchase. Um, paint shop is good. There's actually a story car where you paint cars. So you're going to have to get that uh, at some point. The dyno, love the dyno. That's where you end up tuning your cars. You figure out the horsepower of your car. They added in the drag strip download the ability to tune carbs and tune the ECU. So you do that at the dyno, so you're going to need that. The uh, lifter, it's fine to have two lifters, but you only have one mechanic. So you can only be working on one car at a time anyway. I ended up, You'll end up buying all of these things, but prioritizing what you're buying as you're leveling, I think, makes sense. So it, you don't really need that. The uh, customization, that's... that's our, uh, that's fun, but you need to have the second lifter before you can customize your shop. So that's where we're at. We're at 9,000 bucks. Um, let's go ahead and take a peek at our expanded garage, all right? So right in here through the door is where our expanded garage is at. This is our workbench, and there's multiple places you can work on parts. Any of these spots here are workbenches, so it doesn't matter which one you click on. If you had parts to repair, you click on it, and then the parts are there. If there's body panels to repair, this is where you would click on it to repair body panels. You can still access your skill points at any of these tool benches anywhere. So it doesn't matter where you click on things, but this is where we'll come to repair parts. And now we have the ability to repair some parts. So this, this is really useful stuff that we have now. Um, let's do this. I haven't shown you guys the other, uh, or haven't discussed the other thing that I like to do to save money and to find cases, or to make money and find cases. We did a junkyard run at the end of the last one. Let's do a barn run here once. So at the junkyard, one of the piles of trash will always have a barn map. At a barn, one of the piles of junk parts will have a case. So junkyard, barn map, barn, case. Go to a barn. Now I have it set to not pay a fee to go to each barn. So it's free to go. So you might as well go. That's just the way I have those settings. And if you follow the guide, you, you have it set the same. All right. So we're in a barn. When you first load, just like I in the junkyard, I tend to go the same path. I always go to the right. Now, you'll have to trust me. You'll end up finding which of these... Um, piles of trash has parts uh, if you're ever curious you're not sure 
if you pop up and you click on it you start seeing that green wheel that's that's something that would potentially have parts in it now there's parts here we could repair this left front fender is a repairable part so you could purchase it repair it and then you'd have that in your inventory as a part and that's cheaper than buying it at the store um, this door is a repairable part these parts are not repairable and what I'm doing here is one I'm just identifying their parts if there's parts that I really am interested in buying you can buy the parts once you start making money honestly my advice would be any of these parts that are repairable buy them buy them and repair them and keep them in your inventory that's how I built up a huge inventory of parts I'm actually now on my main safe to the point where I don't need to do that anymore all right so here on the third pile we just found a case and look at this a blow-off valve for a inline five dual overhead cam three starred now some of these three starred parts actually might be useful to buy this I don't believe is one you can repair so I wouldn't purchase it but if that was let's say an engine block that's a three star engine block I would totally buy it all right so picked up the case and just for kicks we'll just look at a few more piles of trash just to see like here's an engine head a 34 percent engine head that's repairable but honestly what I'd be looking for here would be is there any like three star parts that are good parts that I'd want to keep and then definitely be looking for uh, the case once you find the case pretty much I'm done at this barn now the other thing I'll do is I'll look at the at the, the cars now this car the estimated value is 128,000 they're selling it for 160 now if that was flipped and the value of the car was 160 and they're selling it for 128 if you had 128 buy this car right away take it to your shop repair the frame wash it wash the interior sell it you'll make like an instant well almost 40k profit now obviously it's not the case here nor do we have 160k to buy this car but that would be an easy way to flip a car and make some money quickly if you wanted to uh, with our 9k we're probably not going to be able to buy any cars at the barn that one's not a flippable car uh, let's see what's what's this one 16 and it's worth 19 so this would be an instant 3k ish profit right now if we had the money which we don't have but the reason I brought you here is just to show you one how do you find um, how do you go through the piles of junk parts which things have junk parts in it honestly you're just gonna have to click on things to find those um, look for parts that are repairable and again there's a list on the steam guides um, on which parts are repairable what you'll learn as you go body panels are repairable windows are not seats are not headlights are not um, but you'll learn all that as you go so now to get back to our garage hit escape hit return to garage then it'll pick up a list of all the shopping parts that you may or may not have picked up at this barn the only thing we're picking up is the case it does cost us 200 credits but we get our 15 percent discount because we max out that line we'll buy the parts we'll head back to our shop i had done number three and four previously and i didn't get a case so i'm going to look at one and two on this case as far as the order of the cards one scrap and credits so we just netted this case cost us what 180 bucks or something and we just netted 540 bucks and we got some scrap so we're starting to pull together a bunch of scrap which is good and if we wanted to let's just check a preview of our next order and see if there's any orders here that have bonuses there isn't potentially you can get ones that have bonus credits that's a good one an early game to look for is the orders that have bonus credits or bonus XP honestly but the next story car is going to be a 1990 uh, BMW in the game it's listed as FMW Panther MK1 performance uh, but we'll look at that later oh spray it with the factory color okay so we do have an issue here uh, we're going to need to have a paint shop before we're going to be able to do the next uh, story car okay 
Let's see where... How much is the paint shop again? So the paint shop's going to be 15k. So before we can do the next story car, we're going to have to get some cash. And obviously I just burnt through a bunch of cash buying these additional shop upgrades, which is all right. So we're going to have to do a couple of things to make some money. Hmm. So we might end up doing the junkyard trick, grabbing a few cars, flipping them. We'll take a few uh, orders. So actually our next guide will be, let's get enough money put together for purchasing the paint shop and have about a 10K cash cushion uh, before we take the next story car. So I think this will be a good spot to stop guide number seven. Uh, appreciate all your guys' views and attention. Lucas, Isaac, Parker, I hope these are still helpful to you. Um, and we will see you guys in the next guide and we'll get our, our cash up to 20-ish K or so. All right. Have a happy New Year's.